You know, we use technical analysis to study stock charts, but here's a question. Why can't we use technical analysis to analyze the economy? The answer is we can, but perhaps in slightly a different way. You see, we have to understand the differences between stock charts and economic reports, uh, which have far fewer data points and much more subtle variances in the data. But nevertheless, we can. And linear regression is a very helpful tool. It's a statistical method to find the best fitting straight line between two variables. Now, I know it sounds very daunting. It's actually very easy to use. Uh, there's a number of different ways you can do that through formulas in Excel or chart packages. If anyone's interested, maybe we can you know, delve into that. But what we want to do is show you very simply on the most widely followed economic reports, for example, CPI, Consumer Price Index, how to plot linear regression in terms of showing you the overall trend and breaks in the trend, which could show us a change and perhaps beginning of the next recession. By the way, the formula at the top, that's a linear regression formula that we use. It's standard. Now, Every dot over here represents consumer price index on a year over year basis going back a couple of years. You would say, what's the average of all these dots? That's the red line. That's the linear regression line. It shows us the straight line that most closely encompasses or represents the data that we're looking at. Now, I know economies don't go in straight lines, but the use of this the benefit is that, number one, we're able to identify the overall trend, in this case, to the downside. Number two, spot the divergence from the predicted outcome. And this is the real beauty in the formula. It takes all the data we look on the screen, and then we say, okay, where, based on all this data, is are, are we most likely, where do we predict the next number is going to be? Now, the last CPI report, if you recall, was a little bit hot, a little bit higher than what we expected, also higher than what the linear regression formula also predicted. And we can look into this and, you know, from our fundamental analyst point of view and say, well, maybe inflation is back on the rise. Take a look at non-farm payroll. Here's another great example. Over the long term, we've seen, well, a steady trend to the downside in terms of the loss of jobs. Zooming in, we can see last month's report was actually a really big disappointment. Notice that gap between where the red line is, that's where it, the predicted outcome is, and the white dot where our actual number was. Last month's non-farm payroll was 12,000 new jobs created. Prior to that, it was 223,000. You may ask, well, non-farm payroll is coming up at the, end of the month, at the end of the week, actually. What does linear regression tell us? It's predicting around 127,000 new jobs. How about new home sales? We can see over time, it's been quite steady, a slight angle to the downside, but not nothing dramatic. And in fact, the last new home sales number was spot on, right on the expected you know, outcome as far as linear regression predicted. Let's take a look back in history, 2008. Let's see what the recession looked like at the beginning. Now, the white line, that's our data. Instead of using the white dots, we just used smooth it out with a line. It's easier to read. Now, consumer price index, year-over-year -year basis, 2005 through 07, early 08, inflation was quite steady. That's why this line is horizontal, representing more or less the average of our data. But on the right-hand side of the chart, we can see a steep drop that was the beginning of the financial crisis in 08. And that's one of the benefits of using this formula is we're able to see, first of all, what's the overall trend horizontal, and then a big break. And that alerts us. Now, if we want to do this the right way, we would plot linear regression on a number of different economic numbers, jobs, inflation, manufacturing, etc., and look for an overall message that all of these charts are telling us. Here's non-farm payroll in 2008. Loss of jobs was steady. The trend was to the downside. But then late 08, a big break in the jobs market to the downside. The linear regression line really highlighted exactly when that break took, uh, took place. Now, new home sales, the financial crisis of 08 was wrapped right around the housing market, a steady trend to the downside in terms of the home sales figure. And then we see the line accelerated lower. It didn't break sharply like the jobs data did, but it started to deteriorate faster. How about 2001? We don't talk about this time very much. 
Well, we had the tech bubble in the late 90s. Inflation was steady. It was actually rising. And then late 01 or late 2000, early 01, all of a sudden we saw the deflationary number pick uh, era pick up. And we saw that, you know, the beginning of the end of the tech bubble and that crash that followed. Uh, non-farm payroll, same period of time, a steady, slight trend to the downside. Even in the late 90s, we saw a deterioration in the, in the jobs markets. But then we see another principle, by the way, of technical analysis we can plug into this. The idea about double bottoms, double tops, triple bottoms. In this case, we see a triple bottom in late 2000 on the non-farm payroll number, and then a big break. But notice by the end of the year 2000, the jobs numbers were steadily holding below the linear regression line, showing us it was really you know, not in good shape. New home sales, single family homes in the year 2000. Uh, we actually had a slight trend to the upside, and this is an important principle as well. Every economic cycle is different. Every crash is different. In the 90s, it was tech stocks. In 2008, it was housing and banking. Where are we now? What's leading the market? Magnificent Seven, NVIDIA's and the Amazons. It'd actually be quite curious if we were to plot the uh, linear aggression philosophy uh, to those stocks. But putting that aside for a moment, we can see the new home sales number wasn't suffering even after the bubble had burst in the year 2000. And it really goes to show you that the economy is multifaceted. It's not just housing or jobs. It's really everything. Well, you may ask, where are we now? Well, left-hand side, that's where we are now, 2024. Right-hand side, 2008. This is consumer price index. Now, both trends are to the downside, but what's the difference? We haven't had that sharp break. In fact, the last inflationary numbers are still trending a little bit higher than the linear regression line. But if we see all of a sudden a fast break lower and we know exactly where that would be, that might be the sign of trouble to come. How about the jobs numbers? Well, left-hand side, we had the lowest low, last jobs number, 12,000, wasn't good. But it wasn't yet the big break that we saw in 08 to the downside. Now, this jobs number coming up is actually really important. Again, the linear regression formula predicts around 127,000 new jobs will be created. It'll be very interesting to see on Friday what that number looks like. But if we see a lower low, Maybe that's the beginning of what we saw in 08. New home sales. Well, in both cases, present date and 2008, trend to the downside. The last report, again, was right spot on where the formula linear regression told us it would be. Uh, in 2008, the uh, trend deteriorated lower. We want to be on the lookout to see if we fall below this line and if we start to see a steady trend lower as well. By the way, uh, last week we published a video, High Yield Spreads. This was by far, by a lot actually, our most successful video. Uh, we had a ton of positive feedback. We thank everybody uh, for joining and we, a lot of new subscribers as well. We really thank all of you. And uh, I think you'll find uh, what we talked about here to be quite interesting. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.